Hey church, my name is Chip Kendall, and I'm going to be reading devotions this morning. This is something that God put on my heart, and I hope that you're blessed by it, that you're encouraged. Uh, I'm part of really all the locations across church. I'm part of the missions team, um, but I guess my wife and I would call Central Campus our home, and then Whenever we've got South Region stuff happening, we live here in the South next to Manchester Airport, so we love to join in with what God's doing there. But we want to encourage all of you, wherever you're watching from, that we are truly one church across all these locations and all these campuses. So God bless you guys. I hope that this helps to set up your day the way it really helped set up my day when I first wrote it. Um, But our devotion is going to be based on Joshua chapter 3, verses 2 to four. These were our key verses during the Unwritten Rules series. Do you remember that from a few weeks ago? Some of you might remember that. I encourage you to go back and watch some of those videos if you haven't seen that. So great. The conversation between Paul Reed, Pastor Paul Reed and Pastor Sophia Barrett on stage. I just always love the fact that you get two voices instead of one voice. It uh, spices things up a little bit. So this is the Bible verse that was the key verse during that time, and it's going to be the key verse for our devotion today. Joshua 3, 2 to 4. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. Wow. So many great things to pull out of those verses. I'm just going to pull out a few things that God really spoke to me. Um, again, if you want to go back and watch that Unwritten Rules series, it's awesome. It's really great. Just search it on Audacious Church YouTube and, uh, and you'll find it. I really believe that all of us in our lives, we have a trajectory of our life, right? We make decisions and those decisions lead to other decisions. Those decisions lead to other actions. And, and then eventually what we find is that we're on this trajectory. And Pastor Glenn loves to talk about the compass of our lives. Really, really love that illustration and that idea, that picture, that we don't even want to be just a few degrees off. Because if you're a few degrees off on your compass, you're going to end up in a com- completely different destination than where you're supposed to be. And it all starts right here where we are now. And as we navigate through our lives, I would also go further and say we have a trajectory that we're on already based on the decisions of other people and, of course, based on our own decisions in the past. But we don't want to allow these trajectories or these things to dictate our lives. We want to be the ones who decide to tell them. We want to know which trajectory we're going to choose to set ourselves on. And in this passage, I think that we can find a huge help no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what decisions we've got coming up, really big choices, decisions coming up, we can actually be part of what God is doing. Uh, There's a really great book by Henry T. Blackaby called Experiencing God, and I've done that. I encourage anybody who hasn't done that to do that. And in it, the kind of crux of what he's talking about is instead of asking God to bless what you're doing, find out where God is already at work, and join him in his work. And that's what this devotion is all about today. Uh, We're going to be looking a little bit closer at these verses in Joshua. So I want to pick it apart and look at four key phrases. The first one being, when you see. Just to put it in context, in the Bible verse, it says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the Levitical priest carrying it, you're to move out from your positions and follow it. When you see. Now, what does that speak of? That speaks of focus when you see. I love Pastor Glenn and Sophia and how they have such vision for our church and they help us to have a vision of a preferable future. And I honestly believe that as we're able to align our vision with God's vision, joining him in his work, that's the first step in knowing the answer of which way should we go. We've never been this way before. So when you see, for me, speaks of focus, and it starts to be a catalyst for these questions. Here's a great question, a series of questions for you to ask yourself, just like I ask myself. What is the overall vision for my life? What has God given me faith for in this season? How do I minimize 
the other things that are always vying for my attention. There's always things trying to steal your focus, things trying to steal your vision, trying to steal your clarity and, and your drive of what you're doing. And finally, what for me brings focus and clarity? One of the things I love about Audacious Church is we have incredible leaders who help us to lead ourselves confidently, with clarity, and with certainty. You know, these are uncertain times, right? We've heard it for like the last year and a half, uncertain times we're living in. But in uncertain times, that just creates a dark backdrop for certainty from God, certainty from us as a church. Where are we going? What are we doing? Let's have that certainty. So first one is when you see. That to me speaks of focus. And then the next part is the ark. So again, just to put it into context, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and a Levitical priest carrying it, you're to move out from your position. So when you see the ark. Now the ark, for me, speaks of putting God first. We know that the Ark of the Covenant wasn't God. They didn't, it wasn't idol worship, but they did believe that it kind of carried the presence of God. And so the Ark, for me, speaks of putting God first. And again, another series of questions you might want to ask yourself that I find really helpful. What is the vehicle for this vision that God's given me? What has become a symbol of God's faithfulness to me. We know that the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's faithfulness because of what was inside, because of what it represented. Are there areas that need decluttering? Oh my goodness, Pastor Sophia loves to talk about decluttering our lives. And it's so important that we do this from time to time, that we streamline, that we throw off everything that so easily entangles us. And uh, so we need to declutter our lives. And then finally, what solid footing have I already got in any decision that you're making? Is there already some solid footing that I've got? Have I already got something that, that are my, um, my assets? You know, uh, As I set out on a new adventure, what have I already got that I can count on? Don't be so consumed with what you haven't got that you forget about what you have got. <laughs> you've got talents. You've got skills. Um, you have uh, maybe kids. You've got kids in your world. Hey, that's amazing. That is such a gift from God. What are the gifts that you've already been given? Okay, and then the third one, of the covenant of the Lord your God. So we've had when you see, that's focus, the ark, put God first. Third one, of the covenant of the Lord your God. This for me speaks of remembering his promises. And again, a series of questions. What has God already promised me? Some of us have journals we can go back and we can search through some of those and be reminded, oh yeah, God spoke to me really clearly back in May of... 2008. And he, he said that this is what I can expect in my life. What, so what are the promises that God already has promised me? Secondly, what have I sacrificed for so far? You know, often we make a big sacrifice because we feel led by the Spirit, but then we forget about that a year later, two years later. Go back and remember what are some of the sacrifices you've already made because when you sacrifice for God, that's like a down payment. That's like an investment. It's a seed that you've planted in the ground. Go back and see if something has grown from that seed. <laughs> uh, third one, which Bible verses bring purpose to me right now? There's going to be certain parts of the Bible. The Bible's alive and active, man. And there's going to be certain verses that are going to leap out at you, and God's going to illuminate those verses for you. So what are those verses that God's bringing illumination to right now? And finally, where do I sense God's smile over me? I love that. I think that's an Eric Little quote where he said, when I run, I sense God's smile over me. And I would really encourage you guys, where, which areas of your life do you sense God smiling over you? And then uh, the final one is, and the Levitical priest carrying it. Oh, sorry, two more. Uh, there's five things here. And the Levitical priest carrying it, that to me speaks of listening to God's people. If we don't have loads of time left, I'm going to try to be quick. But who is God placed around me that I trust? What are they encouraging me to do? How are they praying for me? What are they carrying in the Spirit on behalf of me? It's a, it's a beautiful thing when you ask somebody to pray for you and you hear them praying for you for the things you've asked for prayer for. But then sometimes they flip into another zone where they begin to prophesy over you and they begin to have a picture for you, a word of encouragement. These are all gifts from the Spirit and they really help you to understand what God 
has them carrying on behalf of you in the Spirit. So find out what that is. We need prayer. We need people to pray for us. Go ahead and reach out and ask for prayer. We've got an incredible prayer team at Audacious Church. And then the final one, you are to move out. Hey, this speaks of embracing the adventure. Which adventures might God be taking me on here? What is my best next step? What journey am I committing to? And then finally today, I choose to fill in the blank. What's one step that you can take that sets you on that right trajectory for your day to day? Remember that where God guides, he also provides. He doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. And as Christ's followers and ambassadors, we do everything in the context of Jesus' command to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Ultimately, this is about obedience to Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And then I want to finish with this great quote from John Piper. Some of you might have heard it already. I was reminded of it by Linda Adams, who I love so much. And it's this, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Isn't that encouraging? God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in him. He's got you covered. He knows the trajectory that he set you on. And he has a plan and a purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And then my quote of the day today is, In each important decision, I'm choosing to focus, put God first, remember his promises, listen to his people, and embrace the adventure. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time.